Tonight, a powerful story about the gift of life, no matter how short. Channel 3's Monica Robbins brings us one family's story of hope, love, and faith. A doctor gives you this diagnosis, it changes your life forever. Our daughter has accomplished more than I could accomplish in a lifetime. And it's really taught me miracles are a lot different than we expect. Our family has been so amazing in embracing her and celebrating her. You don't have to look at this as the end result, that you can actually be in a place of celebration and joy. Well, Monica, this story is more than just inspiring. I got a little sneak peek and it is so moving. It really is. You know what? I've had the privilege of telling hundreds of stories about people faced with extraordinary circumstances and how they inspired us with their strength, courage, dignity, and grace. But I have never met anyone like Rose Vincy. She wanted me to share the story of the baby she was carrying and just a few weeks from delivering a little girl already named Glory. It's a story of how one family taught us to to change our perception of what a miracle really is and how even the smallest of us can leave a legacy. I hope you'll tune in at 11 for Glory's Gift. Thank you, Monica. Sure. You're watching Channel 3 News at 11 with Russ Mitchell and Sarah Shookman. Anticipating the arrival of a new baby is one of life's greatest gifts. But sometimes, unfortunately, parents' hopes and dreams for that little one are changed because of a heartbreaking diagnosis. Our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins, has one family's story. She shows us, in spite of the outcome, it's a story of hope, love, and the incredible gift of life. Love, purpose, connection, and legacy. Four words that define what it means to be a parent. Like any other couple adding to their family, Rose and Chuck Vincy were making plans for their daughter's future, but it wouldn't be the future they envisioned. Miracles come in so many shapes and sizes. The miracle that day we went for the ultrasound and they did confirm nothing had changed was that I got to see her face for the first time. And I think she's so beautiful. Their unborn daughter had anencephaly, a fatal diagnosis in which the brain does not develop. Upon hearing the news, Rose and Chuck immediately reached for spiritual guidance. Their pastor had words of comfort, but miracle wasn't one of them. If God's will will be done, only perfection will come from this. They named her Glory. Thy will be done really has meant so much to us because it's a surrender to God's plan and Glory's journey. Believing Glory had a greater purpose, Chuck and Rose chose to take her to term. The essence of life is sharing love. And I feel like that is the essence of her life. Um, the love that we've gotten to give her and um, the love that she's going to give other people through her legacy. Glory would be the first neonatal organ donor at Fairview Hospital. Rose met with the medical team to explain her wishes. They truly wanted to be there because they want to know more about fetal anomalies and fatal diagnoses and organ donation. As weeks passed, the Vinci's learned more about love for each other, for their son Bodie, and for Glory. I get to carry her soul into this world, um, and I think that's probably like the greatest love story of all. The family didn't go through this all alone. Early on, they found an organization called Sufficient Grace Ministries, founded by Kelly Gherkin, who lost three of her own babies. They offer perinatal hospice and comfort. Doulas Tien Wilkin and Shannon Sasseville will guide the family through the pregnancy and birth. Your life has changed because she lived. She lived and she lives. She's here now. And that's so Rose and Chuck's focus and it's, it's very beautiful. It really changes your perspective. They help make the family connection stronger by taking maternity photos and bringing an ultrasound to the Vinci's home so extended family could see glory too. We spent an hour and a half just looking at staring, looking and staring at her on screen and watching her swim and smile and open her mouth and pout, pout her lips and it was so beautiful. Encouraging Rose to live every day in the moment. They're here with you every minute. You feel them move and you're totally connected with them. And that connection also has been a teacher because it's made me realize the kind of mom I want to be in the middle of some crazy circumstances. 
you know, I don't want to sit down on the sidelines and ask why me. On March 13th, Rose went into labor at Fairview. Tien captured every emotion of those hours on camera. When Glory arrived, just after midnight on the 14th, Chuck and Rose dressed her, held her, and shared her with family. You don't have to look at this as the end result, that you can actually be in a place of celebration and joy. When Glory's heart stopped beating, Rose remained at peace. It's truly an honor and a privilege to get to spend all this time with her and see what she's accomplished in a very short time, not even nine months. I feel like our daughter has accomplished more than I could accomplish in a lifetime. The Vinci still believe Glory is a miracle. Expecting miracles isn't just that I get to keep her. That's, that's my miracle. Maybe her research will actually finally solve why anencephaly even exists. LifeBank retrieved Gloria's pancreas, which will be studied for juvenile diabetes research. Her tissue will help research with autism and Down syndrome. Rose, Chuck, and Gloria's blood samples were sent to Duke University for a study on anencephaly. It's very rare for infants in these types of situations to be actual organ donors to other infants because there's so much criteria that needs to be met. But there is no doubt her legacy will help advance science, which may give the gift of life to other families in the future. Wow, just incredible. And this organization that helped the family, can you tell us any more about them? They're, they have their own amazing, inspiring story as well. And tomorrow at 6, I'll profile Sufficient Grace Ministries so you can learn more about what they do and more importantly, why, why they do it. What an incredible family. And it sounds like this organization is pretty great too. Yeah, it really is. Thanks, Monica. Sure. And I get to carry her soul into this world. Um, and I think that's probably like the greatest love story of all. Last night at 11, we brought you the story of the Vinci family and how they turned heartbreak into an incredible gift of life. But they didn't walk that journey alone. Tonight, senior health correspondent Monica Robbins introduces us to Sufficient Grace Ministries, the organization that helped guide the family through a difficult process and empowered them with choices they didn't know they had. When the Vincys learned their daughter would not live long after birth, they felt hopeless and lost. It changes your life forever. You're no longer invincible when you're faced with the loss of your child and you're making these excruciating decisions. Decisions they soon found they didn't have to make alone. They turned to Sufficient Grace Ministries, an organization that serves all denominations, offering support and empowerment. We don't want any family to go without this support. <laughs> Um, it just means everything to these families. Founder Kelly Gherkin's mission is personal. She's lost three of her own children at a time she says there was no support or options. With the organization's help, Chuck and Rose went forward, planning Glory's birth and honoring her life. All the things you can do to mother in that moment, like give her a bath, um, have her baptized, put her in a beautiful dress, have her meet her brother, read her a story, sing her a song. It was just a godsend because them spelling out everything from A to Z for us so we can focus on each other. Volunteer comfort doulas <laughs> Shannon Sasseville and Tien Wilkins were there, available 24-7 from diagnosis through delivery and death, supporting, reassuring, and documenting. They don't remember what the labor was like. They don't remember who was in the room. They don't remember that they actually smiled when they looked at their baby the first time. And I want to capture that because then they can look at it again and say, oh, there was joy in that room, more than grief. Everything that Sufficient Grace provides to parents is free of charge. The ministry survives on private donations. When they're so devastated and when they think everything's been taken from them, the joy that they experience, we freely give because it was freely given to us. 
Sufficient Grace serves the entire state of Ohio and helps on average 150 families a year. They have services for parents who may lose a baby anytime during pregnancy, infancy, or up to three years. Their goal is to get a comprehensive list of resources into every birth professional's office so when a family receives that devastating diagnosis, they know they have options. The story breaks your heart and gives you hope at the same time. It really does, yeah. I know they are run by donations. Are the doulas paid? At all? No, they no, are really? all volunteers, mm -hmm. yeah, and actually they need more volunteers. Those doulas uh, and the organization provides training and their program is approved for continuing education by the Ohio Nurses Association. Volunteers just need a compassionate heart and they need to be willing to be on call mm -hmm. for an entire labor. Again, we talked about this a lot today, an incredible story and our best of that family. Absolutely. All right, Monica, thank you. Sure. I feel like this is a love story. Thursday at 11, Monica Robbins introduces you to perhaps the youngest hero you'll ever meet. The essence of life is sharing love. And I feel like that is the essence of her life. Um, the love that we've gotten to give her and um, the love that she's going to give other people through her legacy. But that legacy came at a price. Watch one family's mission to turn tragedy into triumph and send glory to God.